All right, let us start chapter five. All right. Chapter five, which is far too full of washing. The only thing to do, Sophie decided, was to show how that she was an excellent cleaning lady, a real treasure. She tried an old rag with, she tied an old rag round her. Thank you so much for the follow. Oh, thank you for the follow. Thank you. One, one, one. Where did I go? There I am. She tied an old rag round her wispy white hair. She rolled the sleeves up her skinny old arms and wrapped a old tablecloth from the broom cupboard round her as a, a as an apron. It was rather a relief to think there were only four rooms to clean instead of a whole castle. She grabbed up a bucket and base and and base what is a besom? I've never heard of a besom. Um and got to work. What are you doing? cried Michael. And Calcifer in horrified chorus. In a horrified chorus. <laughs> They're scared, guys. They're scared. <laughs> Cleaning up, Sophie replied firmly. This place is a disgrace. Calcifer said, it doesn't need it. And Michael muttered, how we'll kick you out. But Sophie ignored them both. Dust flew in clouds. In the midst of it, there were... There came another set of thumps at the door. Calcifer blazed up, calling Port Haven door, and gave a great sizzling sneeze, which shot purple sparks through the dust clouds. Sounds like it'd be quite fun to live with Calcifer. <laughs> Michael left the workbench and went to the door. Sophie peered through the dust she was raising and saw that this time Michael turned the square knob over the door so that the side with the blue blob of the paint was downward. Then he opened the door on the street you saw out of the window. A small good stood there. Please, Mr. Fisher, she, she said. I've come for that spell for me mum. Oh, I should have done that like in a cute little British oral accent. Oh well. Safety spell for your dad's boat, wasn't it? Michael said. Won't be a moment. He went back to the bench and measured powder from a jar from the shelves into a square of paper. While he was doing it, the little girl peered in at Sophie as curiously as Sophie peered out at her. Michael twisted the paper around the powder and came back saying, tell her to sprinkle it right along the boat. It'll last out and back, even if there's a storm. The girl took the paper and passed over a coin. Has the sorcerer got a witch working for him too? She asked. No, said Michael. Meaning me? S meaning me? Sophie called. Oh yes, my child. I'm the best in, I'm the best and cleanest witch in Ingray. Michael shut the door, looking exasperated. That will be all around Port Haven now. How may it not like that? He turned the knob green down again. Sophie ca crack cackled to herself a little. Quite unremitant. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> but it might persuade Hal to let her stay if... Oh, I did not read that. Right Probably she had let the besom she was using put ideas into her head. The besom? Is it besom or besom? This is such, like, this is very old English, by the way. A lot of this is stuff from, like, 19, um, I think this book came out in, like, 1960-something. This is a really old book, guys, by the way, in case you were wondering. 
I think this came out in 1966. Let me double check though. Nineteen eighty six correction. The book came out in nineteen eighty six. But yeah, it's 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 been a while since people have talked like this. <laughs> But it might persuade Howell to let her stay if everyone thought she was working for him. It was odd. As a girl, Sophie would have shriveled with embarrassment at the way she was behaving. As an old woman, she did not mind what she did or said. She found that a great relief. She went noisily over as Michael lifted up a stone in the hearth and hid the little girl's coin underneath it. What are you doing? Calcifer and I try to keep a store of money, Michael said rather guiltily. How spends every penny we've got if we don't? Freckless spendthrift, Calcifer. <laughs> that is actually what that says. Feckless spendthrift, Calcifer crackle. He'll spend the king's money faster than I burn a log. No sense. Sophie sprinkled water from the sink to lay the dust, which made Calcifer shrink back against the chimney. She, then she swept the floor all over again. She swept her way toward the door in order to have a look at the square knob above it. The fourth side she had not seen used, the blob of a black paint on it. Wondering where that led to. Sophie began briskly sweeping the cobwebs from the beams. Michael moaned and Calcifer sneezed again. Hal came out of the bathroom just then in a waft of steamy perfume. He looked marvelously spruce. Okay then. Even the silver inlets and embroidery on his suit seemed to have become brighter. He took one look and backed into the bathroom again with a blue and silver sleeve protecting his head. Stop it, woman, he said. Leave those poor spiders alone. These cobwebs are a disgrace, Sophie declared, fetching them down in bundles. Then get them down and leave the spiders, said Howell. Probably he had a wicked affinity with spiders, Sophie thought. They'll only make more spreads. And kill flies, which is very useful, said Hal. Keep that broom still while I cross my own cross my own room, please. Sophie leaned on the broom and watched Hal cross the room and pick up his guitar. As he put his hand on the door latch, she said, If the red blob leads to Kingsbury and the blue blob goes to Port Haven, where does the black blob take you? What a nosy old woman you are, said Hal. That leads to my private plot hole, and you are not being told where it leads. He opened the door onto the, the wide moving moorland and the hills. Come on, Paige, turn. Turn, Paige, turn. Come on. Come here, little Paige. Goodness gracious. There we go. When will you be back, Hal? Michael asked a little <laughs> despairingly. Hal pretended not to hear. He said to Sophie, You're not to kill a single spider while I'm away. And the door slammed behind him. Michael looked meaningly at Calcifer and sighed. Calcifer cracked with malicious laughter. Since nobody explained where Hal had gone, Sophie concluded he was off to hunt young girls and got down to work with more righteous vigor than ever. She did not dare harm any spiders after what Hal had said. So she began, she banged at the beams with the broom, screaming out, screaming, out spiders, out of my way. 
Spiders scrambled for their lives, which every way, every which way, and spiders and webs fell in sweets. Then, of course, she had to sweep the floor yet again. After that, she got down on her knees and scrubbed it. I wish you'd stop, Michael said, sitting on the stairs out of out at her way, out of her way. Calcifer cowering at the back of the grate muttered, I wish I'd never made a bargain with you now. Sophie scrubbed on vigorously. You'll be, you'll be so much happier when it's all nice and clean, she said. But I'm miserable now, Michael protested. Hal did not come back again until late that night. By the time Sophie had swept and scrubbed herself into a state when she could hardly move, she was sitting hunched up in the chair, aching all over. Michael took hold of Hal by a trailing sleeve and towed him over to the bathroom, where Sophie could hear him pouring out complaints in a passionate mutter. Phrases like terrible old bitty and won't listen to a word were quite easy to hear, even though Calcifer was boring. How stop her? She's killing us both. But all Hal said when Michael let go of him was, did you kill any spiders? Of course not, Sophie snapped. Her aches made her irritable. They look at me and run for their lives. What are they? All the girls whose hearts you ate? Hal laughed. No, just simple spiders, he said, and went dreamily away upstairs. Michael sighed. He went into the broom cupboard, bored and ha haunted, until he found an old folding bed, a straw mattress, and some rugs, which he put into the arch space under the stairs. You'd better sleep here tonight, he told Sophie. Does that mean Hal's going to let me stay? Sophie asked. I don't know, Michael said irritably. Hal never commits himself to anything. I was here six months before he seemed to notice I was living here and he made me his apprentice. I just thought a bed would be nicer than a chair. Then thank you very much, Sophie said gratefully. The bed was indeed more comfortable than a chair, and when Calcifer complained he was hungry in the night, it was an easy matter for Sophie to creak her way out and give him another log. In the days that followed, Sophie cleaned her way rem remorsefully, remorsely, mem remorsely, there we go, remorsely through the castle. She really enjoyed herself telling herself that it was looking for clues, telling herself she was looking for clues. She washed the window, she cleaned out the oozing sink, and she made Michael clean everything off the workbench and the shelves so that she could scrub them. She had everything out of the cupboards and down from the beams and cleaned those too. The human skull, she fancied, began to look as long-suffered as Michael. It had been moved so often that she tacked an old sheet to the beams nearest the fireplace and forced Calcifer to bend his head down while she swept the chimney. Calcifer hated that. He crackled with mean laughter when Sophie discovered that soot had gone all over the room and she had to clean it all again. That was Sophie's trouble. She was... Remorless, but she lacked method. I wonder if remor remorless is supposed to mean, like, vigorous. To have vigor or something. I don't know. But there was a method to her remorseness. Oh my god. She calculated that she could not clean this thoroughly without sooner or later coming across Hal's hidden hoard of girl souls or chewed hearts or, or else something that explained Calcifer's contract. Up the chimney, guarded by Calcifer, had stuck her as a good, struck her as a good hiding place, but there was nothing there but quantities of soot, 
which Sophie sorted into bags it in the yard. Had stored in bags in the yard. The yard was high on her list of hiding places. Every time Hal came in, Michael and Calcifer complained gladly about Sophie, but Hal did not seem to attend. Nor did he seem to notice the clean the clean <laughs> cleanliness, and nor did he notice that the food closet became very well stocked with cakes and jam, and th the occasional lettuce. That's it? Just lettuce? <laughs> for, for as Michael had prophesized, word, word had gone around Poor Haven. People came to the door to look at Sophie. They called her Miss, Mrs. Witch in Poor Haven and Madam Sorceress in Kingsbury. Word had gone round the capital, too, though the people who came to Kingsbury door were better dressed than those in Port Haven. No one in either place liked to call on someone so powerful without an excuse. So Sophie was always having to pause in her work to nod and smile and take in a gift, or to get Michael to put up a quick spell for someone. Some of those, some of the gifts were nice things, pictures, strings of shells, and useful aprons. Sophie used the aprons daily and hung the shells and pictures round her cubbyhole under the stairs, which soon began to look very homelike indeed. Sophie knew she would miss this when Hal turned her out. She became more and more afraid that she, he would. She knew he could not go on ignoring her forever. She cleaned the bathroom next. That took her days because Hal spent so long in every day before he went out. As soon as he went leaving it full of steam and scented spells, Sophie moved in. Now we'll see about that contract, she muttered at the bath. But her main target was, of course, the shelf of packets, jars, and tubes. She took every one of them down and on the pretext of scrubbing the shelf and spent most of the day carefully going through them to see if the ones labeled skin, eyes, and hair were in fact pieces of girl. As far as she could tell, there were all just creams and powders and paint. If there once had been girl if they had once been girls, then Sophie thought how had used the two for decay on them and rotted them down and on the wash bin to thoroughly to recall. She had hoped they were only cosmetics in the packets. She put the things back on the shelf and scrubbed and scrubbed. Okay. I hate when there's a short sentence that's like between two pages. That night, she sat aching in the chair. Calcifer grumbled that he had drained one hot spring dry for her. Where are the hot springs? Sophie asked. She was curious about everything these days. Under the Port Haven marshes, mostly, Calcifer said. But if you go on like this, I'll have to fetch hot water from the waste. When are you going to stop cleaning and find out how to break my contract? In good time, Sophie said. How can I get the terms out of hell if he's never in? Is he always away this much? Only if he's after a lady, Calcifer said. When the bathroom was clean and gleaming, Sophie scrubbed the stairs and the landing upstairs. Then she moved on to Michael's small front room. Michael, who had who by this time seemed to be accepting Sophie's gloomy, Sophie gloomingly as a sort of natural disaster, gave a yell of dismay and pounded upstairs to rescue his most treasured possessions. They were in an old box under his worm-eaten little bed. As he hurried the box protectively away, Sophie glimpsed a blue ribbon and a spun sugar rose in it. On top 
of what seem to be letters. So Michael has a sweetheart. She said to herself as she flung the window open. It opened into a street in Port Haven. And he, she heaved his bedding across the sill to air. Considering how nosy she had lately become, Sophie was rather surprised at herself for not asking Michael who his girl was and how she, he kept her safe from Hal. She swept such quantities of dust and rubbish from Michael's room that she nearly swamped Calcifer trying to burn it all. You'll be the death of me. You're as heartless as Hal, Cal Calcifer choked. Only his green hair and blue piece of his long forehead show. Michael put his precious box in the drawer of the workbench and locked the drawer. I wish Hal would listen to us, he said. Why is this girl taking him so long? The next day, Sophie tried to start on the backyard, but it was raining in Port Haven that day driving against the window and pattering in the chimney, making Calcifer hiss with annoyance. The yard was part of the Port Haven house too, so it was pouring out there when Sophie opened the door. She put her apron on over her head and rummaged a little, and before she got too wet, she found a bucket of whitewash and a large paintbrush. She took these indoors and set to work on the walls. She found an old stepladder in the broom in, in the broom cupboard and she whitewashed the ceiling between the beams too. It rained for the next two days in Port Haven, though when Hal opened the door with the knob green blob and stepped out onto the hill, that weather was sunny with such big clouds racing over the heather faster than the castle could move. Sophie whitewashed the cubby hole, the stairs, and the landing in Michael's room. What happened in here? Hal asked when he came in on the third day. It seems much lighter. Sophie, Michael said in a voice of doom. Oh wait, I should have said that differently. Sophie! <laughs> I should have guessed, Hal said, as he disappeared into the bathroom. He noticed, Michael whispered. Oh, wait. He noticed, Michael whispered to Calcifer. The girl must have given him in the in at last. It was still drizzling in Port Haven the next day. Sophie tied on her headcloth and rolled up her sleeves and geared on her apron. She collected her besom, her bucket, and her soap, and as soon as Hal was out the door, she set off like an elderly avenging angel to clean Hal's bedroom. Oh no! <laughs> she had left that until last for fear of what she would find. She had not even dared peep into it. And there was a silly... It was, and that was silly, she thought, as she hobbled up the stairs. By now, it was clear that Calcifer did all the strong magic in the castle, and Michael did all the, ha ha all the hack work, while Hal gadded off, catching girls and exploiting the other two, just as Fanny had exploited her. Sophie had never found Hal particularly frightening. Now, she felt nothing but con contempt. She arrived on the landing and found Hal standing in the doorway of his bedroom. Uh oh He was leaning lazily, one hand completely blocking her way. No, you don't, he, he said quite pleasantly. I want it dirty, thank you. <laughs> Sophie gaffed at him. Where did you come from? I saw you go out. I mean, I meant you too. I meant you too, said Hal. You done your worst with Calcifer on porn, Michael. It stood to reason you'd descend on me today. 
and whatever Calcifer told you, I am a wizard. You know. Didn't you think I could do magic? This undetermined, this undermined all Sophie's assumptions. She would have died rather than admit it. Everyone knows you're a wizard, young man, she said seriously. But that doesn't alter the fact that I'm the, that your castle is the dirtiest place I've ever been in. She looked into the room past Howe's dangling blue and silver sleeve. The carpet on the floor was littered with bird, littered like a bird's nest. She glimpsed peeling walls and shelves full of books. Some of them were queer looking. I'm sorry, that is what it says in the book. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to go with very odd looking. There was no sign of a pile of gnawed hearts, but those were probably behind or under the huge four-poster bed. Its hangings were gray-white with dust, and they prevented her from seeing what the window looked like outside. House swung his sleeve in front of her face. Uh-uh, don't be nosy. I'm not being nosy, Sophie protested. That's room! Yes, you are nosy, said Hal. You're a dreadfully nosy, horribly bossy, appallingly clean old woman. Control yourself. You're victimizing us all. But it's a pigsty, said Sophie. I can't help what I am. Yes, you can, said Hal. And I like my room this way. You must admit I have a right to live in a pigsty if I want. Now, go downstairs and think of something else to do, please. I hate quarreling with people. There was nothing Sophie could do but hobble away with her bucket clanging by her side. She was a little shaken and very surprised that Hal had not thrown her out of the castle on the spot. But since he had not, she thought of the next thing that needed doing at once. She opened the door beside the stairs, found the drizzle had almost stopped, and sh sailed and sallied out into the yard, where she began vigorously sorting through piles of dripping rubbish. There was a metallic clash! And Hal appeared again, stumbling slightly in the middle of the large sheet of a rusty iron. Sophie had been going to move next. Not here either, he said. You are a terror, aren't you? Leave this yard alone. I know, I know just where everything is in it. And I won't be able to find the things I need for my transportation spells if you tidy them up. So there was probably a bundle of souls or a box of chewed hearts somewhere out here, Sophie thought. She felt rather th thwarted. Tidying up is what I'm here for. What am I here for? I don't know why, why I added that extra part. I'm sorry. <laughs> she shouted at how. Then you must think of a new meaning for your life, Hal said. For a moment it seemed as if he, he was going to lose his temper too. His strange pale eyes all but glared at Sophie. But he controlled himself and said, Now tort along in, indoors. You overactive old thing. And find something else to play with before I get angry. I hate getting angry. Sophie folded up her skinny arm and did not like being glared at by his eyes. That looked like glass marbles. Of course you hate getting angry, she retorted. You don't like anything unpleasant, do you? You're a slithered outer, <laughs> a slither outer, that's what you are. You slither away from anything you don't like. Hal gave a forced sort of smile. Well now, he said, 
Now we both know each other's faults. Now go back into the house. Go on, back. He advanced on Sophie, waving her toward the door. The sleeve on his waving arm caught the edge of the rusty metal jerked and tore. Damnation, said Howe, holding up the trailing blue, uh, blue and silver ends. Look at what you made me do. I can mend it, Sophie said. Hal gave her another glassy look. There you go again, he said. How must how you must love servitude. He took his torn sleeve gently between the fingers of his right hand and pulled it through them. As the blue and silver fabric left his finger, there was no tear at all. There, he said, understand? Sophie hobbled back indoors rather chastened. Wizards clearly have no idea and no need to work in the ordinary way. Hal had shown her he really was a wizard to be reckoned with. Why didn't he turn me out? He, she said to herself, to Ulf and half to Michael. It beats me, said Michael, but I think he goes by Calcifer. Most people who come in here either no, don't notice Calcifer or they're scared stiff of him. All right, that is the end of chapter five. 